Hello guys, it's Toby here, back again on the Snorri Dev channel. And as you can see, I'm playing Kerbal Space Program. And what I'm doing today is I'm going to launch a rocket that is going to be the lightest thing I think is possible. It's definitely not, but the lightest thing I've made that's possible to get into orbit. As you can see here, I'm not going to use uh, Mechanical Jeb, which is a mod uh, that's an autopilot mod on the flight, but it says 23.3 tons down in the corner. And uh, as you can see, here's the model uh, I made that does not have the Mechanical Jeb. 23.3 tons it is, and I send it to the launch pad. And as you may have seen, it's called the Chicken Explorer 1. I don't know why I called it the Chicken. Maybe it's because it's small. I don't know. Uh, it has nothing to do with the, just dumb name, guys. So, you may have noticed that the command module is upside down on the rocket. And that is because, well, I want to be able, if I ever wanted to make it slightly bigger or improve it at all, so that I could land it on the moon or on Minmus, I want to be able to see where I'm landing. I got that t uh, idea from a YouTuber named Scott Manley, who flew to the moon and back using only cockpit view. And so he turned the cockpit upside down. So what I'm going to be doing in this flight is I'm going to be using only the cockpit view. And as you see there, I turned up the throttle. And what you'll notice immediately, there's the nav ball that I'm using. I have to keep it right in the center. And normally red means down. But since my cockpit is upside down, as far as I'm concerned, red means up. So turn up the throttle. I'm getting ready for... There I go. I just blast off the insane acceleration. jet engines on this originally, I put on the aerospikes assuming that would make it better, it turned out it didn't. So I changed it into jet engines, as you can see here, and those weigh 0.2 more each, 0.2 tons more each, so I, it's now up to 24.1 tons, and 24.1 tons is going to be the weight of this rocket at final. So here's my first attempt at it. As you can see, I'm getting the nav ball. I just turned on the SAS. Now I've got the fine-tuned controls on, and I'm going to take off, and it's going to get a nice smooth takeoff. It actually sounds really cool because I turn on the engines, and then I throttle up. And um, I really like this challenge of cockpit view. It's much more fun when you do it face down, too, because you, you can really have some beautiful views of the Earth, as you can see that. Urban atmosphere, you, you can basically get insane efficiency levels. Like, ridiculous. So there's my entire cockpit. You can actually see bits of curb in there. Now, it's not completely cockpit view. I did use the map, but I consider using the map as just a given. But as you can see, uh, my first attempt did not go so well. I did not get into orbit, and I ran out of fuel. And, uh, yeah, not so much fun. So I had to come down, um, and oh, I was so close, because the magical number for orbiting, in case you don't know, is 2,250 2, meters per second, and that's straight from my head, just from experience. Uh, that's what you need, 2,250 meters per second. You can see I did not miss by much, but of course I would have needed to re-enter anyway. So it uh, looks like I'm going to have to redo it. Now, you see, I get out of cockpit view just because I want to see what went wrong. Did I do something wrong? Uh, get rid of the, the staging. But I wasn't actually controlling the rocket all that much at, at this point. It doesn't count because I never made it into orbit anyway. 
So I'm going to try it again in just a second as soon as these parachutes go off. But by the way, this angle is actually pretty good. If you look at the G-force meter, it doesn't go up very high. Uh, even when I get the uh, parachutes out. So now here's my next attempt. I already have those new connections out. because I started losing uh, for, uh, upward velocity. And then my second mistake on the mission was I, um, I put my apoapsis at 3,000 kilometers, or meters, and here I'm at 80,000 meters. So, so here I am burning it. Look, I'm getting into that magical number. I got my So one of the reasons I also that also helped me this time was I got rid of the jet engines at 16,000 meters. So if you're looking for that magic number, between 16,000, I'd say 16,500 is when you should drop your jet engines if you were to make an exact replica of this rocket. Now, what you may have seen on the side, there's Kerbin, by the way, is uh, are those um, fuselages on the side. And they look like jet fuel. They're not jet fuel. They're actually the structural fuselages. Oh boy, that is beautiful. I'm sorry, but I have no choice but to stare in awe right there. That is amazing. That is screenshot worthy. Anyway, uh, those structural fuselages that you see in the main screen, generally you see them when you're trying to build aircraft, and you're like, why would I ever use this? It holds no fuel. Well, it turns out it holds on those... Um, those landing legs. The reason why I put on the landing legs is because I want to land on the moon, as I already stated. I could just as easily get rid of them and get rid of the structural fuselage and probably save myself around, I believe the landing legs are 0.1 each, and so that'd be 0.4 tons, and then the fuselages are 0.4 each, so it would save me a total of 2 tons, so I could actually get this down to 22.1 tons. 24.1 tons is what I did, and 24.1 tons is what I'm going to stand by. So right now I'm just warping out to my uh, ap apoapsis. I keep getting these confused. Apoapsis is the high one. And I'm about to uh, do my orbital exit burn. And what, that, what that's going to allow me to do is uh, not, not float around like a satellite around the Earth forever. So, what I have to do here is I have to turn the X, the circle of the X is the direction I'm not going, the circle with this direction is the direction I am going, but because my cockpit is upside down, the direction I am going to the cockpit is actually the direction I'm not going. It's very confusing, but um, I just have to point that direction, which is the opposite for the engines, and I fire a little bit, and then I quickly turn it off, and as it turns out, I actually timed it very well. Um, if you look at uh, when this is all done, there you go, boom, nice firing burn, and off they go. If you look at it, it looks like I'm still in orbit. No, I'm not. I have a nice little return, return trajectory. It's at an angle. The reason why you'd want it at an angle, it's not actually, it wouldn't actually make a difference, but the reason why you want it that way is because in real life, when you uh, return from a rocket, you want to come in at an angle so that you slow down as slowly as possible. I know that doesn't make sense. You want to slow down as quickly as possible, right? Well, when you're coming down from, looks like, 
2,600 meters per second, which is around 5,000 miles per hour, and uh, you're, you have to slow down in a very short time, you're going to experience about, in order for you to slow down, the acceleration you need is about, oh, so I'd say, 30 times the force of gravity, so you'd get crushed. It'd be like Jupiter, almost. I don't know what Jupiter's gravity is. So, you want it in the air, so the air slows you down slowly, you want to keep it preferably below 5 Gs, and then when you want to open your parachute at the right time, because if you don't, your parachute will fly off. That does happen in this game, but, um, alas, we do not have the luxury of dying, <laughs> dying when you open your parachute, when you, um, come in at a bad angle. So, yeah, this is what's going to happen. I, I just experienced 5Gs, but now I've got the parachutes slowing me down. We've got a nice slow entry at 5 meters per second. For those who don't know how to convert to miles per hour, just double it. Easiest way to do it. So 10 miles per hour. And here we go. We're about to hit the water. I'm looking. Are we, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? We're down to 10 meters, people. And we survived a 24.1 ton rocket that I could easily modify to be a 22.1 ton rocket. I'm praying to keep it that way just because I'm going to try and get to the moon next time. So 24.1 tons, you have to beat that. If you want to copy mine, just write 22.1. Let me know. Uh, let me know how we can improve upon this down in the comments. And uh, adios, amigos.